and for fair to increase, and ever earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest, or be perfectly blessed, until all singing from our CGS number 506. Five or and six. <clears throat> to our internet, uh, our internet audience, this is the Apostolic Faith Church UK, Bexley branch, and uh, we are broadcasting live from uh, number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA5 3EP. In case you live local, you can join us uh, for this morning service. You haven't missed much. Uh, the choir has just rendered out uh, two songs. Loyalty to Christ, and uh, every bridge is born behind me. And we just listened to the last um, beautiful duet uh, by our 
brother and sister, it's your all on the altar. So please feel free to join us and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Meanwhile, we are singing from our CGS 506 after the introduction. still rejoice in the Lord. Yes. We continue yes. singing from the same in book 505. 5 around 5. Conquer us and overcome us. Now we are. Yes. Though the precious blood of Christ we have victory. Yes. If the Lord be for us we can never fail. Yes. Nothing against his mighty power can ever prevail. Amen. Amen. We sing all the verses.
reading again from the same book, 509. 509. They that trust in the Lord are secure. Yes. Though the storm rages, dark o'er uh, uh, dark o'er the sea. For this anchor of promise is sure. Yes. My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. May the grace of God be sufficient for you this morning. Amen. We sing verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. will be with you wherever you stray. Amen. Jesus will be with you and will guide your way. Amen. Though the lonely desert or mountain bear, Jesus will be with you, brother, everywhere. Amen. We sing uh, two verses, one and three. Verses one and three.
Now that the Lord has told us that He's going to be with us everywhere we go, He wants us to trust Him. And that leads us to the last song, 514. Trust on, trust on, believer, though the long conflict be, though yet, yet shall prove victory, thy God shall fight for thee. I said, the Lord shall fight for you. We sing uh, verses 1, 2, and 3, the last verse we shall sing standing, while we shall remain standing to be led in prayer. standing with our eyes closed, brother Ope, we come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. Glory be to your name, Lord. Amen. For those who trusted you in the past, they never suffered shame. Amen. And those of us that are trusting you now, Amen. your promise that we will never suffer shame. Amen. Lord, for that we glorify your name. We thank you for Sunday, Amen. a day that comes the, the end of the week. Yeah. For many, it is the end of the week. Mm -hmm. For many, it is the beginning of the work. Mm -hmm. But Lord, you remain still. Yeah. You are God indeed. Yeah. We thank you for a place of solace yeah. where we can come and feel your spirit, yeah. where we can sing hymns without fear, where we can praise you without prejudice. Lord, we thank you yeah. for the opportunity of Christianity, yeah. how you fathomed it out in your own good economy. Lord, we thank you Amen. for salvation of souls. Amen. We thank you for those of us that would otherwise have perished, but you bring something called Amen. salvation. You, bring, you planted it in our heart. You make it life, a living life, a living salvation. Lord, we thank you. Amen. There are so many standing here today. They do not understand. They are left from their right. Oh, Lord Jesus. We want you to explain, Amen. deep down in their heart, Amen. the meaning of salvation Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, there are many that have come, like this woman with the issue of blood. Amen. If I will be touched the hem of his garment, Amen. I will be made whole. Amen. Lord, today, oh Lord, as they stretch forth their help, their faith yeah. to reach unto you, yeah. let this be their day, Amen. a day of healing. Amen. 
a day of being made whole, a day of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, we rebuke Satan, we rebuke his enemies, we rebuke his advances, we rebuke his adversaries, we rebuke all his ambassadors. We thrust them out of your worship place. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit land, let your spirit rain, let your spirit rain. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. We will continue by having first special, may the Lord depend on you. At the end of which, we have the Bible reading and then the last special, in the things I cannot do alone, which is a solo, and then the word of exhortation, which is coming to us this morning from Brother Banji Alade. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalm 42, verse 5. <clears throat> the book of Psalms 42, I'll read from 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquiet in me? Hope thou in God, 
for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Misa. Deep calleth unto Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouse. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Amen. And in the night his song shall be with me. Amen. And my prayer unto the God of my life. Amen. I will say unto God my rock. What hast thou forgotten? Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Eleven and the last. Why hast thou cast down O my soul? And why art thou disquiet within me? Hope thou in God, Amen. for I shall yet praise him Amen. who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. Stone. 
be down near. Oh Lord, I greatly need me. In the things I cannot do alone. I do not ask for strength to move a mountain. Not earthly fame or fortune of my own. I only ask for added and storage. In the things I cannot do alone. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear yeah, Lord, close to thee. Let's turn to our Bibles this morning. Um, the Bible reading, Psalm 42, um, verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why and why Art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Amen. For I shall yet praise him. Amen. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 43, verse 5. Psalm 43, verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance? And my God. If you ever want to see the whole life of a down-to-earth Christian go to the Psalms. You will see the life of a man whose life was exposed to us when he was on the mountain and when he was in the valley. God did not spare the Bible. He gave him 150 Chapters, so to speak. Just one man and his songs and his poetry and his grumblings and his mournings and his praise and his singing. God said, I want the world to know what it is to be a down-to-earth Christian. And so today, in sort of commemoration, I, I will say um, in the United Kingdom, this week is the Mental Health Awareness Week. 
And the whole theme in the UK is how you see yourself and how you feel about yourself. And if anybody on the face of the earth should have a good sense of who they are and what they look like, I think it's children of God. But don't be deceived. The devil is also changing the minds of Christians. And by God's grace, he will be our mental health of our countenance, the way we look, the way we behave, and the way we deal. He will be our health, not only physical. I think physical is more obvious. If somebody walked in here and was limping, we will instantly show concern. Brother, what happened? If someone comes into the church and somehow you notice that they have a bandage round, maybe a sling, or their leg or elbow or body is cast in POP, what is happening? What happened? We show concern. We want to know what's going on. But when the damages and the injuries are not seen, what do you do? How do you handle that? Where do you go? Who do you tell? Where is your help? And people, like they told David in this psalm, it will happen. If it hasn't happened, I'm not a prophet of doom. There is no regularity on the way of life. In fact, if there is irregularity, you dead. Because once that meter in the hospital goes ding, and it's not going like this, you're gone. So if you're expecting this smooth level, it's on the other side. And that too has a comma. Because unless you're saved, the other side is the beginning of another side. So you want to make sure while you're on this side of the earth, you get clued up. Connected up with God. God will help us. Short title of this sermon, just in the next 20 or so minutes, is Rising from the Valley of Depression. Stats have told us that one in four people in the UK are depressed. Please, 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 the first thing I want to tell you in relation to what the UK itself is marking today about yourself, the first thing I would like to tell you, which I'm not, I'm not the one, it's in the word, it's also in Psalms. So let's go to Psalm 134. Let's go to Psalm one, sorry, 139. It's just, this is, I just want this to settle in your soul. And, and God just used this word to settle you as he's trying his best through all the services in the UK to help both young and old, both children and parents and teenagers and senior citizens, the government, the whole community, people in the country have seen it well, seen it fit, and thank God our church is involved too. What, we, what, I, what I'm going to say in the next 20 minutes is not enough. Come on Saturday. God has given our church the opportunity. And some people who are more into this. I'm not a professional. I'm not a specialist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a surgeon. But what I know is the word of God is powerful. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we strongly believe that the word of God can give us sound minds. It can. It can. It did it for this man, David. 
and look at the one of the things he's saying to himself in Psalm 139 verse 14. Look at what he says. Let, let's, let's even start from 13. 13, Psalm 139. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Amazing. You want to you wanna phantom what God does in the, in the woman's womb? How he formulates you in, in the womb? How you grew from just a foetus, six weeks, 12 weeks, when the full blast is 40 weeks, the child is ready to come, and when he starts moving and rambling and moving, all of a sudden you see the nurses and the midwives, they are ready, and pop comes the baby. How did bones form in the belly? Something that was like jelly in the belly became hard. God is greatest. Anytime you want to feel low about yourself, remember you are unique. You are blessed. If they look at you from head to toe, I am not discrediting the people who have studied the human body. But somebody put it together. Somebody sold your veins. Somebody sold. They put, he he master handedly put everything in your body into the right place. You need to glorify this God. He said, Majesty, you are worthy to be praised. Look at what he says. He says, 14, I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul know it right well. So I want you to know this one. First of all, let this one, let it settle. Let it settle. That though the billows roll, I didn't choose the songs. I didn't choose the solo. In the things that you need, that you, some things you can't do alone. You need help. Yeah. Hey, God, yeah. God, God bless the choir Amen. God bless the song givers Amen. God bless everyone in this Amen. church Every little thing yeah. But the reason why I know God has a blessing yeah. You see sometimes when you want to give the word When you want to just share something With anyone And the devil knows that this thing is going to be of benefit mm. Then you become under attack right. I'm not the only one under attack One of our great reverends from Portland, Brother Jack Robbins, he said, when did the war start? He said, war began when a soul became saved. Mm -hmm. So at your back is a bull's eye target. And the enemy has his eye right on that salvation. Can I get it before you get there? But by God's grace, by God's special grace, the Lord God Almighty who has, ha- who has helped the saints that went before, oh, yeah. he will oh, yeah. help you too. Amen. Amen. 15, he says, my substance was not hid from thee. No. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. 16, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, I want you to remember this one. This one I want you to note. When you go through storms, every part of your body is in God's book. I'm going again. And in thy book, all my members were written. Who is the surgeon now? Who is the doctor? Who has the file of your body? It's here. Through the inspiration of God, this young man, this man who said, I have been young, I have been old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. This man, this man, he knew through the inspiration that all my members are written, which is in which in continuance were fashioned. Continuance, look at the word of God, which in continuance were fashioned. When as yet, there were none of them. (laughs) In continuance, some of you will lose some parts of your body. And in continuance, God has a way of replacing it. Are you with me? Praise him. Praise him. So let that one settle in your mind. You know why? Because the fact that the world has been cursed because of sin... We have not been exempted from the sorrows of life. 
I'm going to repeat that again. Because this world has been cursed due to sin, we are not exempt from the sorrows of life. Until we get to glory, where there will be no sickness, no sadness, no tears, no disappointments, oh, until then. But now, we have battles to fight. Sometimes, it will be because of stress. Sometimes, health problems. Sometimes, death in the family. Sometimes, a serious financial crisis. Sometimes, your relationship has broken down. These things are hard. For a child, you may be thinking, children, do they get depressed? Do they feel so sad? Yes, they do. How? A child goes to school and they call him black boy. All of a sudden, oh, I didn't, I'm not black. I think I'm brown. Why did I? What's the matter? They kick him. You're not, wearing the, you're not wearing the right things. He gets bullied. Gets called names. And children start feeling sad. Could be you're underperforming in school. You're sad. You don't know where to go. You can't even tell anyone. Please, I want you to know today, if you've not said anything and you don't know anything, I want you to know that you are fearfully Amen. and wonderfully made. Amen. And nobody has the right or left to bring you down. Amen. If you do not cooperate with what they've said and accept it. Accept what God has told you right. in his word. Right. And it shall be well. Amen. It will be well. Amen. You've got to fight. Because life is a journey. What am I trying to say? Some people are actually born sad. Born sad. From the beginning of their lives to the end of their lives, their parents don't understand why is my child always low. When we get there, on the other side, a lot of our wives will be given Zs. But as at now, we may not get answers. But it still doesn't mean we shouldn't trust him. May God not, may the Lord depend on you. Amen. Look at all those songs. Trust on, trust on, believer. Yeah. Go dark the night and yeah. dread. Yeah. Just trust on. Because by faith, Amen. by faith alone, and the grace that God gives you, those are those two things that will see us through. Not by might, no. not by power, no. but by your spirit backing us up. That's why you, you just blessed coming to a place like this. Because you're here, you're feeding, feeding, feeding your soul. Your never dying soul. And if you're careful enough, something will be telling you, this soul that doesn't die, what do I do with it? And the whole concept, apart from what I'm talking about this morning, is please find a place with your soul with God. Yeah. What are we saying? Give that soul that never dies to God while you are still breathing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because that one, God himself, as we did in the answer lesson this morning, as omnipresent, omniscient, and omni. Potent God is, he cannot kill you totally. You cannot be totally destroyed. It's like physics. You will not disappear into thin air. You will live forever. But there's two sides. You are either going to burn forever. I know people don't like to hear this. Mm -hmm. But we have a responsibility to right. tell you the truth. Right. Because the word says, right. you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. 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 But
what? Be wise. Be wise and make decisions now that will have greater impl- a greater impact on your future. Don't wait. What makes all of us equal here is death because it doesn't respect anyone. When this spirit came to my family, it was like a joke. My brother and my dad, they just traveled. I was 16 years old. The next morning, this is not the time of phones and everything. The next morning, what do I hear? Your dad and your brother were involved in a motor accident and your brother died on the spot. He was 26 years old. He died on the spot, 17th of December, 1988. My dad managed, managed, managed because of complications, the fractures in his skull and everything. He was at the, the, the Lagos Teaching Hospital in Idiaraba in Lagos. I went there, I looked at him, a handsome man, a nice man, had this kind of brother, Ukwe stature, he was like a jellyfish. He was like a jellyfish. His time was up. Ticking. Ticking, ticking. The only thing we could give him was what we call pap. It's like custard. And we try and put it in, it just be taking it. He managed, he survived to January the 6th, 1989. Too much, too late, gone. My mom, because, oh, thank God you have God. Amen. Thank God you have God. It's not that you're not going to have sadness. But we have somebody. Look, look at what it says in that text, 42. I want you to be encouraged. In 42 verse 8, it says, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And if the daytime is too pure for you, and it is the night that you feel your own sorrow, what did God say? And in the night he will give you a song. His song will be with you. And your prayer unto God, your life. What a blessed thing you have. Especially those of you who have given your life to Christ. Praise him. Because it's not that you don't go low. But you come here and you recycle. A lot of people don't know, they don't even know how to cry. But you come here, you don't only cry for your sins, you cry about the problems of your life. At at least you take in and you can give out. A lot of people, there is nobody to cry on. But even when there's nobody to cry on, we can cry on the Lord. And by faith, he does wonders here. I see many people come here with sadness and they live rejoicing. And you'll be wondering, is this place a clinic? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Make the best use of the opportunity. Back to my story. My mom didn't have this God you had. So for one whole year, She wore the same clothes for one whole year. My mom was never the mother I knew again. Her spirit had gone. You know, sometimes you can go through a problem. Your very spirit has gone. Death has not come yet, but you are dead. My mother's situation was only a matter of time, but we didn't understand. We too, we were not Christians. That's why I said, thank God for your life. Thank God for what you know. Because knowledge, they say, is power. My mother, when it became exactly one year, the 8th of January, when when my dad was buried, because he died on the 6th, And because we are like Muslims, immediately on the 8th, he's buried. What happens? The very day it becomes one year, my mom decides to commit suicide. Without God? Without a God you can call my God? Like David is saying, my God? You know there's a personality in that? My prayer? Unto the God of my life? You, you, you want to wait until we have to beg you to have your personal God? Don't go through life waiting for storms to come. Don't wait. Listen, I'm not a prophet of doom. This thing is shared to all of us equally. I have a sermon here. The first time I came to Apostolic Faith, very old. This is a sermon book I had 1990. Immediately I came here. I started writing. Anytime they are preaching, I'll be writing. This one is started now. It's 1990. There is a sermon here preached by Reverend J.O. Shoinka, one of the overseers. He called that sermon, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it and read it to you. Just, just the title so you can see. He, he called the sermon Life in the Tent. You know one of the major things he said? Some people, it is the early part of their life they will go through problems. And then the rest will be easy. Some people, it is the latter stage. He didn't know he was talking of himself then. Because give it a few years, the latter stage of this man of God was hot, but God gave him victory. Amen. Some people, it will be the middle stage. But the one that scared me most, he says some people throughout their whole life, from their entry into planet Earth, you will be fighting battles. Are you with me? Known and unknown. Seen and unseen. You will have to fight. And you don't know how you're going to win. But with God we are victorious. Amen. You will rise. Amen. We will rise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I am not here to come and accuse you. That why have you allowed yourself to be down. That's pointless. Whether you like it or not. Something will bring you down. It's if, if, you're going, if, you're, if you're flowing steady, it's only because it has not arrived. Mm. It's true. coming. Slowly, true. steadily. You need God. Yes. Fortified. Yes. Powerful. Yes. You, if, <laughs> let, let me tell you. You know my strategy? Because after all this happened to me, I thought this is the end. <laughs> I thought it's the end. So what do I do now? I'm the only one who lives with my mom. Where do I go? But does anything get catch God by surprise? Does anything catch God by surprise? But before you committed that sin, God has already marked you for forgiveness. He's just waiting for you to come and ask for it. Yeah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Before you thought of that iniquity in your head, yeah. maybe in your school, yeah. maybe in your college, maybe in your university, maybe at work, when you did that dirty thing, God has already put you into consideration. Your forgiveness is sure, Amen. but you need to ask for it. Oh, yeah. And th this afternoon, you have Amen. another opportunity to ask for it. Amen. <laughs> I thought it was finished. And lo and behold, while I was going through that problem, my aunt, who I had never known because we didn't recognize anyone in a Christian way, nobody recognized as a Christian. And this woman, while she's teaching Sunday school children, God just takes her mind from those children and says, I have another child. I've not even given my life to him yet. But he said he has another child. He said, go and meet him. You need to adopt him. This is now your child. <laughs> The plan of my life changed. And here comes this woman. No money, no nothing. She says, God sent me. How do I go? I have another auntie who is rich, who I know. So I have two choices. And before the time, God has already prepared me. In my dormitory, I saw a tract, Apostolic Faith, for another's crime. I read it. How somebody could forgive someone who had offended them and they landed in prison and stayed in prison for almost half a century. Yeah. If somebody could forgive someone, I told God in my dormitory, I had not even known anything about the apostolic faith. If you can help me find where these people are, I will follow them. And here comes this woman. She says, I'm from apostolic faith. God says, this is your chance. You miss this one, you miss the whole thing of your life. And I chatter in, and I follow her, and my life changes. God brings me here, he saves my soul. God brings me here, he sanctifies me. I need power for service, I want to work for God, God gives me in my room. What else? They said you need to pray before you marry, you can't afford to make mistakes. I prayed at a point in time, and God gave me my wife that I have today. Amen. What about my job, my life, my everything? Yeah. I prayed before I chose yeah. my course. Yeah. When I found that it was too good, I had to share it with my sister. Hey, you got to know about this. He, she came too. Now she's here with me. Yeah. And the word of God has to spread that way. Yeah. Amen. What am I trying to tell you? God is just waiting for you. Yeah. You may be at the lowest stage of your life. 
You may be at the point where, you know, um, I, I, I have a way of, um, when I, whenever, whenever I, I'm, I'm going through, because, you know, when God saved me, that doesn't mean that everything went so smoothly from there. Then I had to deal with the, what they call the vicissitudes of life. Sometimes there will be nothing. How did I deal with it? I'm just, because this is, this is a sermon to help us as we continuously go on this way. How, how did I solve it? This is how I didn't solve it. Whenever I had problems or I have problems, what I did or what I do or what I used to do, I would just go on my bed and cover myself. I still remember one of my birthdays. And I think Joshua was very small then. It's like, you come back from school. Ah, Daddy, you are still in bed? Does it make sense? It's like depression. You sleep too long because you've lost all motivation to do anything. The sadness is so great. I'm like, I can't even fend for my own family. How am I going to? What, this is, what, is, what, what life is this? God, you, you, did you promise me this? God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what he said. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. There's a promise. Oh. Yeah. Praise God. Through God's tutoring. And that's why, by God's grace, I, I, we just pray that God will help you to understand that you are not alone. Whatever you're going through, you are not alone. You, I was talking with some brothers during the week, and two of us said that, you know, yeah, we, we go through this thing. But you see, please, this is, if there's only one plea, if there's only one plea, don't suffer in silence. If there is nobody on the face of the earth that you can tell what you're going through, then there is no hope. Because the devil will trap you in a corner and deal with you. And that is why you have people who at the end of the day think there's no hope, no light at the end of the tunnel, and they do things that they're not supposed to do. Please, this ministry is here to help. We may not have all the answers, but we can signpost you. Okay. The first person we will signpost you to is God. Yeah. After that, there may be some other treatments, help that we can get from outside services. You will not be denied, but the choice will be yours. Yeah. But one thing I want you to know that you are in the right place. Yeah. You are in the right place. How do I deal with it now? Now, God started dealing with me in 2015. He said, you need to work on your mind. My mind, even though, you know, the Bible talks of renewing your mind. Yeah. It's not only reading this Bible. Sometimes you affirm it to yourself loudly so that your subconscious can listen. Because sometimes all, some of us are programmed terribly from the past. Things that are in our head from the past is terrible. Yeah. And sometimes, I'll, in fact, not sometimes... Almost every day I wake up, I have about 30, sometimes 40 affirmations I read from the word. I will not die, yes. but I will declare yes. the works of the Lord. Yes. I will read it, I will call my name to it. I say, when I can't do something, I say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Look, come, come and help me. Amen. When, I, when I'm about to, something happened and it's hard for me to remember, forget. I say, forgetting what is behind, I press forward. I put my name, I trust in God, I read myself, by the t because the word of God is so powerful. Yes. You will find out that the word of God will start lifting you out of yes. that valley of depression yes. and putting you on high. And you will be soaring. You will be soaring. Yes. Brothers and sisters, 20 minutes won't do it justice. But 20 minutes with your maker will do it justice. Yes. Two minutes with your maker. Yes. One second with your maker. Fully giving your heart to your maker. Oh, your whole life Amen. will make sense. Yes. You're invited to come to the altar to yes. pray. And God bless you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another privilege, another opportunity to look up to you, to call upon you, to take advantage of this moment as we're on our knees calling upon your name to come and help us, to save us, to answer our prayers. Please come down. Hear us today. Let us leave this place with joy of heaven in our heart and with healing to our bodies, to our souls. Do this for us, O oh Lord, and much more as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. 